Hey harmonizers, welcome to Florida. You probably been wondering, how do your Canadian horses adjust to Florida? Or what's it like bringing your horses somewhere to a totally different country for three months? How do they live? What does it look like? What do you guys do? So in this video, I'm gonna take you guys around the farm, share with you some tips and tricks and some logistics about taking your horses to a completely different country for three months and how that works and uh, how my horses live during that time. So come with me and let's take a look at the horses. Here's a look at the outdoor ring. It does have lights that we can turn on at night, although I'm never usually here at night unless I'm coming back from somewhere I need to turn on the lights. She just has the barrels because they do some barrel racing here. So in terms of amenities, the ring's pretty basic. The footing's actually a little bit on the deep side, so it's not super ideal for jumping. But, uh, and then the barrel's pretty basic as well. So I have to bring down all of my own jumps and poles and pedestals or anything I wanna train on while I'm down here. So it does make for a very packed trailer on my end. Uh, but the ring is very, very spacious, lots of room here. There's also a round pen that I'll show you guys, which is uh, very handy. But for me, most important was how my horses were gonna live because I'm not here every day. They're not, you know, schooling, five, six days a week, just three times a week typically. So the fact that my horses have that big field there, that's them in the distance with their shelter there with the hay. So they've got lots and lots of space. And then the farm itself isn't too huge. This is the driveway coming into the farm. There's a couple other pastures. So there's some other pastures here with horses in it. So there's horses on all sides, another pasture with horses. Up the driveway there is the house to the property and there's a pasture with cows in it which is pretty cool I actually have walked Alicia up there to go take a look at the cows just to kind of see what she thinks of them and I'm told that I'm allowed to go ride in with the cows if I want to go practice moving cows so when I have a helper up here next with me we're definitely gonna give that a go because I think that'd be awesome for my horses to get that exposure while we're here there is a couple other fields here with some horses in it and some really nice trees for shade which is awesome and then we have the barn what's really nice is there's lots of space for my trailer to be here and act as my barn which is awesome and uh and then there's the barn with the cross ties which i only really use for bringing my horses in to use the wash stall if needed or when the farrier comes and then the barn just has kind of a loop that goes around on either side nothing too fancy or crazy going on here it's kind of the essentials it's a, a nice uh, tidy place it's a safe place for my horses to be in and I like that I had everything that I needed there are stalls in the barn but they're usually taken by other horses that are on indoor board whereas my horses are on outdoor board some space for my noodles and stuff she didn't mind that I brought all these things brought all of this down from Canada my my noodle obstacles, my pedestals, my jumps, everything like that. Around back the barn, there's a horse exercise walker that doesn't actually work. So it's just kind of like a, a round pen almost. And then there's the actual round pen over here in the corner. So there's a horse in it right now. Sometimes there's a horse turned out in it so we can't use it. And then sometimes I have used it for king if I needed a, a spot to work in, if somebody else was in the other ring. And then there's a coop of chickens in the corner. So it kind of makes for a scary little trail loop if you want to come back here and ride through that. And then another field of horses and that's the house up there. That's kind of the extent of the property going around the corner here. So there's not a ton of space. Like if you want a trail ride, you want to, you have to go somewhere else kind of thing or, um, you know, I can't go jumping here or things like that other than what I bring myself. There's some outdoor stalls here which come in handy if a horse is waiting for their turn with the farrier. Usually, and there's a, a bathroom in the barn and the, usually this is where the farrier does their stuff here. With the barn and there's the wash stall there. So that's a little look at the barn. Nice and simple but has everything that I need and most importantly a good place for my horses to be. And if you look at all the horses here, they all look super healthy. One of the things when I was asking about boarding that was super important to me was fencing. 
and I asked, do you have any wire fence? And she said, yes. And she showed me a picture of the wire fence and I saw that it was this kind of small wire fence with the wooden board on top. And I said, okay, that's actually all right because their hooves can't go into this small rectangles like that. The big square page wire fencing that you see at some farms, a lot of cow farms have that kind of fencing. Super dangerous because if a horse puts their hoof in there, they can get their whole leg caught up and the wire doesn't break. And it can sever tendons, it can sever ligaments and muscles and really hurt a horse and end up putting them in a situation where they end up being put down. But also you can see they have so much space to roam around in, uh, lots and lots of space. Right now, the grass is not super there because it's February. We've had some cold temperatures and not a lot of rain. So we're not seeing a lot of grass right now. Uh, but a lot of space to roam. My jumps that I was allowed to set up there and the horses having a shelter, super important. Lots of big shelter and then a spot for their hay to go there. All really important stuff for me. And then they have a, a water trough over there in the corner. When it comes to feeding my horses, I bring all of my supplements from home. So I still bring all my Omega Alpha with me. I've got their Biotic 8 for the uh, prebiotics. I've got the Vanitox, which is a supplement that helps gives them vitamin E and some other minerals. I've got my Equibody Glow, which is an oil that helps give them some shine and some fats. And then alfalfa pellets is what I use as my base. And alfalfa pellets, I bring some with me, but alfalfa pellets are pretty generic wherever you go. So it's a great feed because no matter where you're competing or traveling to, you can usually get a bag and they're usually similar quality uh, wherever you get them. I also feed some Purina Optimal, which is a vitamin mil mineral balance feed. It's got some protein in it as well. But this feed is not available at every feed store. So I have a different brand that I'm gonna be using while I'm down here that's kind of similar, but this is what I use when I'm at home. So I bring some with me and then that way I can kind of combine the two together. And that way the horses can switch over without hurting their bellies. Usually I feed my horses myself and sometimes I feed them at the trailer like this. I've got the thoroughbreds tied. Sometimes I tie them in different spots. Elon's not actually tied. He's just standing there eating his grain and pretty happy to do so. Sometimes I feed them in the field. Sometimes I feed them before I work them, after I work them. Just kind of depends on the situation. But I tend to use my trailer as a bit of a, a hub for the horses. I tack up at the trailer. I um, keep them tied here if they're waiting for the farrier or something like that. And then the trailer's a consistent place that travels with us on the roads. So when we go to horse shows and things like that, it just helps the trailer feel like they're moving barn almost, <laughs> complete with all of my tack. Don't judge me on how messy my tack room is, okay? I don't actually move stuff out of my tack room. I keep everything. It's an organized mess, guys. It's an organized mess. And that's because when I go to leave, like I'm here for three months, but that time will kind of turn around pretty quickly. And when I go to leave, I don't want to forget anything. So you'll notice my helmet's handy. I've got my saddle pads and my saddles that are pretty handy. I've got treats. I've got their bath stuff up here. These are water jugs for traveling, these big blue jugs here, more treats, another bag of alfalfa pellets and some supplements, my Espana silk, which I don't go anywhere without, all natural um, bug sprays and detanglers, uh, my clothes, extra jackets, show clothes and stuff is all up there, my Acumat, roping stuff, uh, all of the stuff that I need, my Western saddles, English saddles, everything. Uh, I've got my thin line pads that I use for impact protection in here. I've got my tapestry comfort girth that I use both for English and Western, different styles that I have. So all that stuff stays in my trailer. Otherwise it becomes uh, too confusing if I'm gonna lose different pieces. And I'll just show you guys, I do keep some stuff in the back of my trailer that I want to just kind of debulk a little bit. So if I come back here, I'll show you guys. I've got some hay bags, I've got my manure, I've got extra bags of feed that I bought. So I use, I use this space a little bit. And if I'm gonna be going to a horse show or something, then I just move that part out. And then I have hay over in the other side. The only other thing that I 
put out is their blankets. I'll sometimes hang those up in the barn. But otherwise, I really want to keep all my stuff pretty much at the trailer as my home base. Think of it like a barn. And then when I do go to leave, it's not going to be such a daunting task to get everything put away and, and packed in. One of the things in Florida is they use golf carts for literally everything. So this is the little golf cart going out to haul out the manure spreader. Yeah, it's a golf cart that is hauling the manure spreader. Not a tractor, not a gator, just your average run-of-the-mill golf cart, which I think is pretty funny. But One of the tricky parts about having your horses off-site is you need to buy hay. This is the hay feeder where my horses live and I chose this farm because they get to have all this pasture but as you can see it's very brown now. This is because it's February and we haven't really had a lot of warm weather or rain so we're definitely going to need to buy some more hay even though my horses have pasture when um, it is grass out I still have them on hay 24 7 because I want them to have lots of forage. So we're going to be heading over to the hay shop and you're going to get to see what the hay prices are like in Florida. This is what it looks like to get hay. I have them load it into the back of my pickup truck and then we literally push the bales off or use the tractor to pull them off and put them into the feeder. This one here is a Tifton hay bale and then I'll take you guys to the feed store so you can see getting some alfalfa hay. The Tifton hay is that coarser hay. There's Connie going off in her little golf cart which she uses for virtually everything. And I go to Larson's to get the hay. This is Larson's hay store. There's a few different hay options. This is totally unlike anything I buy my hay hat in Canada. It's a very different way of doing it. They have lots of different barns of hay, lots of different types. You can go and take a look at it all and some different prices for all of them. They've got these little forklift things that they're going to use to put the hay onto a scale and weigh it. And you pay based on the weight of the hay. So it's all very accurate and measured and the price is based on the here's the a look at the alfalfa rather than just paying for bales bale. like for example so in canada i always just pay like a Connie flat fee of like eight bucks a round bale or any type of feeder. eight bucks for a small and square of hay which is usually so an alfalfa mix and condensed, whereas here the horses they're gonna weigh can't stick their face got all the way in it they have to kind of chew on it and then they have kind of regular hay so the compact the hay this is my 500 in. pound you can see, uh, this block that actually ended up being 596 pounds so super heavy even though it's super tiny because it's a compact alfalfa block it ended up costing me about 200 dollars or so here's the little pricing you can so see the big bale of alfalfa is going to be like 250 grass off the ground or an of orchard alfalfa mix with their of the big bale is going to be 279 dollars crazy expensive and they home, last a really long time probably no more than 100 dollars for a bale of those size and this is way less prices of so here's them putting the bale bales. into the back and then they of also don't take my up pickup much truck, space to the store little 500 because this tiny little bale here is 500 pounds. It's kind of crazy it's that a it's compact bale. It's about the size of maybe two square bales, standard square bales, maybe three standard square bales in terms of space, which uh, three small square bales would only be about 120 pounds. So it's just got so much packed into that little block and it lasts really, really long. So uh, kind of a neat way to do the feeding. And But I don't think you can get them up in Canada. I've never seen them other than when I came down here to Florida. So 
really um, really interesting way to feed the horses and I think it's it's working for them the horses look really healthy and the horses seem really happy you can definitely see that the horses prefer eating the little compact alfalfa bale. So I put a 500 pound alfalfa bale and then this other hay here is called Tifton and so it's a more coarse stemmy hay, doesn't have the same rich nutrients in it. So it's a lot of good fiber for them to eat but doesn't have all the nutrients all packed in. The horses also have a little salt lick here that I bought for them. So that way they can get their salt whenever they need it. They also get supplements from Omega Alpha as well. But this is kind of what it looks like their hay set up here. With their two different types of hay so they can kind of choose. And always have some of the fiber Tifton hay available. But then can choose to have the richer alfalfa hay there as well. Some of the other facilities I looked at had a lot more to offer in terms of obstacles or jumps or a better arena or things like that. But then usually what they were lacking was the ability for my horses to live outside 24 seven or having ideal turnout. There was one place that looked super awesome, but my horses would have only been out for two hours a day. And instead they would have been indoors for that amount of time. And because I don't ride my horses every day and I don't work them, they really need that outdoor time to make sure that they can uh, decompress and play and be horses. And even if I was riding every day, I think being indoors, for most of the time over several months is pretty hard on the horses especially because I don't work my horses super super hard when I'm with them I just don't have um, the time for that and also they're just not conditioning for that kind of uh, workout on the farm so finding somewhere for that outdoor 24 7 board was really key and then this place ended up being pretty close to where my parents live so this is only 20 minutes away from where I'm staying at my parents house here in Florida which made it pretty ideal which is really nice and it's also kind of convenient because it's on the way to all of the horse parks so it's on the way to Florida Horse Park for when I'm competing there it's on the way to the World Equestrian Center when we'll be heading out there to go um, I'm not going to compete I'm just going to ride and school Alicia out in the indoor arenas and jumps and uh, have some fun out there so it's kind of neat that it's on the way to all of those different places as we go around which is really really handy but even if it wasn't uh, it still would have been my pick just based on the quality of life that my horses get to live while they're here is definitely the most important thing so i hope you guys enjoy taking a tour around boarding your horse in florida a few of the things i looked at to make my decision of where i was going to keep my horses and let me know what you think of where my horses are staying for the winter time here in florida this year thanks for watching guys